Bituay uh, encourages Ukrainian content producers to raise socially relevant themes in TV shows, movies, documentaries, reality shows, and online content. Це історія про борщ, страву, яка дуже різна в різних регіонах України, але тим не менше це страва, яка нас всіх об'єднує. We want funding to develop action series about farmers, how they take advantage of the land reforms to stop radio attacks. Apart from grants, PitchUA winners will also receive consulting support from American and European experts. Ми хочемо показати людям, наскільки унікальна і класна є наша країна. Ми хочемо показати зміни, які в ній відбуваються. Ми хочемо показати, наскільки важливо цінувати свою історію і свою культуру. Тільки що ми побачили надихаючий ролик від проєкту Transformation Communications Activity, який фінансується агентством США з міжнародного розвитку. Власне, за їх підтримки реалізується низка проєктів, присвячених соціально вагому контенту, зокрема конкурс PGA та одноіменна освітня платформа. Наша наступна секція виконується саме в партнерстві з TSA. Тож, зараз ми проведемо інтерв'ю на тему «Сила сторітелингу в топових серіалах світу» в зв'язці з соціальним вагомим контентом. Ми будемо говорити з нашим спеціальним гостем Девідом Левіном. Девід Левін – неймовірно потужний професіонал індустрії. Він майже чотири роки був головою серіалів в HBO, і саме під його орудою вийшли такі круті серіали, які всі ми з вами бачили, як «Справжній детектив», «Світ дикого заходу», «Гострі предмети», «Реальна кров» та «Гра престолів». І деякі з них були номіновані та отримали премії «Золотий глобус» та «Еммі». І зараз ця людина є президентом з питань телебачення в компанії «Anonymous Content», яка займається продакшеном топових серіалів для провідних стрімінг-платформ та телесеріалів. Тобто ця людина є творцем найкращих серіалів світу. Тож, зараз з нами на зв'язку має бути Дейвід. Дейвід, хай. Can you hear us well? I can hear good morning, everyone. Perfect. So, very happy to have you here with us. We don't have too much time. We have 25 minutes with you. Um, and today we're going to talk about the new realities. We're going to talk about drama, in the context of COVID and drama in the context of future, whatever it holds for us. Uh, and my first question is the following. Over the past year and a half, apart from COVID and PCR tests and you know, vaccine brands, we've all enriched our vocabularies. And one of the terms that everybody now is using is the new normal. And has the new normal affected the way you create series, the way storytellers tell stories? And if that has affected the way you tell stories, how exactly? I think every single time there are conditions in the market that change the market, uh, storytelling evolves to fit it. Um, COVID has only enhanced the market because it's changed the nature of production. It's changed what's feasible and what's affordable, um, but hasn't stopped us from making everything that we make. But it may change how we make what we make. People become more innovative in COVID. People make series that, that, that evolve to the point of, of, of what is dramatically feasible at a time where shooting is restricted. Um, but I actually find entertainment to be elastic and smart and durable, and all of us continue to make the best that we can make no matter what the market conditions are. Okay. Um, if you could get a bit more specific, what TV dramas that came out in the past year and a half since COVID started, in your view, have, 
have already been very successful and, and, you know, and smart and flexible enough to adapt to this new reality and grasp the, the new audience that we now have? I thought, uh, I thought the latest hit in the US from HBO, my, my former home, that I didn't work on, but I'm proud of my old colleagues, White Lotus was a great example, which is to send an entire troupe of actors to a resort and control the environment, but still tell a drama about the salaciousness of the upper class and the challenges that they have with their morality towards each other and towards themselves. Um, and I thought that was really clever, was a way to make a show that was as profound and as deep and as rich as the HBO tradition, but then to evolve to do it in a, in a COVID friendly way. Um, and I thought on the other side, a show that was made just before COVID, but that exploded because of COVID, Queen's Gambit, um, was the attention to detail, the filigree, the beauty, uh, what Scott Frank did in every frame uh, with Anya Taylor-Joy, I thought was really extraordinary. And I, and, I, and I feel like those are the big emergers, at least for us in the US, and, and we presume globally. Okay, thank you. I was about to mention Queen's Gambit, and we're going to talk about it a bit later, which is a very curious case. Um, yeah. The next question um, is uh, the continuation of what we just talked about is the difficulties and challenges that we're now facing. In what ways should we come up with new solutions and what, you know, what, what problems are we facing and how, how, how are we solving those? Well, I think it's a question of, of what we perceive entertainment to be. You know, if, if entertainment is an escape from reality, then that's part of our solution as tr dramatic storytellers. If entertainment is a reflection of reality, that's another challenge of ourselves as storytellers. And if we, if we combine them both, that's why we create a genre. Um, so my, my mind, I, I actually find that market conditions, um, while playing a very distinct and palpable role in our own lives only enhance our entertainment because hopefully they make creative people more creative. Um, and that's what we all are. Okay. Um, we've already talked a bit about, you know, the, the drama hits that, um, that impacted the, the viewers. Can you give any more examples, maybe with a bit of analysis, why exactly they, they, they managed to, to hit so hard? I think, at least to the ones I mentioned, I think White Lotus, um, uh, let's skip to one that actually made a really, really big impact, I think, uh, in the States and, and is helping put Apple um, on the significant player in the, in the space, um, which is Ted Lasso. You know, the, the idea of Ted Lasso, uh, uh, American soccer coach moves to the UK, to American football coach moves to the UK to coach UK football, a different sport, um, was, it, was a ge genuinely sort of simple and wonderful idea. Um, but the impact it made in terms of its aspiration and its kindness and its decency and its <clears throat> attempt to bring people together is an example of the new global world that we live in for television, that, that an American show and a British show could be combined into one major form and play across the world. I think the, the other thing that we're all seeing in the States in a wonderful way um, is that every, every, everyone's television is being magnified uh, for us with equal um, uh, uh, intensity and strength uh, as a result of the global services. So we're seeing television the same way each other's television, the same way we would have seen each other's movies 30 years ago. Um, and it's a wonderful thing. Um, those shows made the most impact on me, certainly Ted Lasso uh, for its optimism and its decency, Queen's Gambit for its intimacy and its 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 reflection, um, and and uh, White Lotus for its uh, uh, challenging social mores. I think those are the, those are the shows that made the most impact on me sincerely. Okay, and um, drawing a bit from what you mentioned a bit earlier is. Um, you know, the, the social impact and people trying to get away from reality. Um, with a bit of context, here in Ukraine, we've, uh, you know, apart from adapting to the pandemic, we've uh, unfortunately have been fighting a war in, in Donbass and eastern regions for eight years now. And there's uh, always an argument. Do we want to, to get closer to that content and, and plunge into it even more? Or do we want the viewers to run away from it? To, 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 get, to get to a different um, reality. And then with, with America, which is 
is still and going to be the, the, the biggest major player in film and television with Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter. Um, do you think people are more drawn to social I issues or do you think there's a tendency that people run away to different eras and different realities? I think both. I mean, and it's a really good, smart question, which is, do you do you make the entertainment that reflects your reality in the moment that it's reflected? Or do you do you take the time to reflect on your reality and make the entertainment when you have understood it? Um, I was going to say around the circumstances that that we were um, uh, exploring in the US social movements, um, uh, 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 equality movements, um, you know, those voices get elevated in a, in, a, in a time where they're being raised. And so what's what's really changed is uh, the diversity of storytelling voices that are being amplified in the US is 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 being raised. As it pertains to uh, the Ukraine, um, do you tell a story about something you're in? I think you tell a story whenever you want. Um, you know, ultimately, as creative people, and as uh, you know, we we align with distribution platforms um, to tell stories. And so, if 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 there's a distribution platform that is excited by the story that we want to tell, I think we always tell it. I don't I don't think it's worth restraining storytelling. But when you're in a mode of conflict, at least in our American experience, we tend to we tend to not portray conflict when in conflict um, because it's hard to it's hard to live it and then escape into it, um, which is why we which is why our conflicts our, our our galactic battles for life and death usually take place well in the outer in outer space um, or in fantasy worlds or in the way past. Um, so this way you're experiencing the triumph of, of values and ideals and goodness versus badness, but you're not doing it in the real world where the outcome is still undecided. Does that mean that we're going to have a, a new wave of Me Too and Black Lives Matter, you know, resurrection and analysis and reliving when people are finally out of the active phase of those events? I think we're. I think we'll always um, have analysis of those um, issues for for the people that are magnifying them because they're they're very important to magnify and to analyze why people have been treated less, why the world um, is 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 less opportunistic. Um, and I think those those themes and issues, because there was a really amazing line in, in True Detective 2 that I, I very I very much have, have admired and stuck with that Nick wrote, um, the acts that are in us are in us long before, you know, they come out of us. It's essentially paraphrasing. The, the, the line was, that was in you before I met you. And I think when storytellers are storytellers, everything is in them. The world influences us, uh, our experiences, information and knowledge change the way we might approach our storytelling, but it doesn't change the stories that are in people. And so if those stories are in people, they're going to be told, um, not just in the moment of the movement, but, but, but for, for a long time. How do you then find new ways and new approaches to eternal issues? Uh, I, I think genre helps, you know, genre is a beautiful uh, agent to be able to express oneself. Um, so I think genre always helps. Horror has become a, a, a thematic medium again to express fear um, and fear of the unknown and, and fear of the monster and fear of uh, fear of, 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 of whatever it is that, that, that scares us most. Um, science fiction, which is one of my, my favorite genres, is an opportunity to, to talk about issues. But instead of putting people that look like us on the screen, we put people that look like us, but in the future, which is always really beautiful. Um, action is a really great way to express triumph. So when you feel like you need to win or succeed or challenge the 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 constructs that are preventing you from moving forward action always helps because it makes you a hero in your own story um but but i would say for for all of us you know i i've been so lucky to be able to work with some of the the most amazing storytellers and the first question that we always asked in my old job and i still ask now is why are you telling this story 
why do you want to tell this story right now? And in that story of why you want to tell the story is what allows us to tell the story most. And it's what you magnify most in the teller. Not all storytellers are going to want to tell stories and themes, but the storytellers who want to tell stories and themes will learn how to wield those themes in their work. Um, and all work becomes very powerful that way. Um, it's a privilege to be able to make entertainment. Um, and all entertainment has equal value for people. It, it, it serves the role of allowing them to, to enjoy their time when they're not doing the things that they call their life. And do you think that you've just, um, you just said that you ask yourself, why do I want to tell the story? Do you think that uh, storytelling can be good at offering solutions to social problems at all? And now with you know, all the social issues and opportunities and challenges that we have, how much more pertinent it is? Yeah, it can provide examples, certainly. Um, uh, solutions, uh, you know, solutions aren't for, for real life. Um, you know, are probably debated by every writer's room um, in existence because ostensibly what's being shared in every room is a personal set of experiences that then get fictionalized or a real amount of research in a true story that gets analyzed to the point of offering a solution to the, to the circumstances themselves. We have been working um, with Nat Rich on his novel, Losing Earth, uh, which examines uh, 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 whether climate and climate change has been present uh, since the, the mid 70s and who were the people that tried to magnify the fact that the earth was was potentially going to heat up and and how we how we dealt with it that's a direct look at whether or not there is uh, 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 um, uh, and how long and how pervasive sort of the planet has been evolving um, on a scientific basis. And for the for us telling it, there's a truth in that um, because we believe in the science that's being explored in the piece. Um, but, but I would say it, we don't necessarily have a solution in the show, but we hope that by seeing it, people will look at it and say, okay, I would like to change and do my part. And, and, and that's where entertainment has, has a social, environmental, um, uh, moral uh, 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 value to, to, to everyone that watches it because the entertainment in it is still moral and ethical, um, but it's not judgmental. It's just offering a potential solution to what it is that people may presume is happening. Okay. I would like to divert a bit and uh, redirect our conversation um, and come back to the topic of you know, social issues that are so important now to highlight and they're so important for the United States, um, in, you know, majorly, uh, but everywhere else in the world, obviously. But now uh, I'd like to uh, draw the attention to the new regulations of the Academy Awards and the special quota and the new requ re requirements about representation of all kinds of minorities and that you cannot really compete and enter you know, the, the, um, you know, the Academy Award uh, committee uh, screenings if, uh, if your film doesn't fit those requirements. What is your stance on it? What, what, our stan what I guess my stance is, and it's, it, it's, 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 an, it's a good em em emotional stance, um, I had this amazing colleague at HBO, and even though I would say I've worked on an array of very different things in my life, um, she said that you you tend to vote um, and you tend to create and you tend to program from your own experience. And just because you have an array of beautiful experiences, um, it doesn't mean you've had other people's experiences. And so the changes in the academy are providing other people with the opportunity to vote um, so that, that it, it that there are different experiences in the vote in the voting um, uh, of the Academy Awards in the same way there are different experiences in the creative talent that are making the movies um, and television uh, that get awarded in 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 but by, by by our by our countries and in in our systems um, and that would that's a wonderful thing you know we made um, I just wanted to answer your question because you you had asked something and that we made. Um, there's a very famous documentary, um, docu-series made in the US, um, which has always been a significant rallying cry um, um, uh, called Eyes on the Prize, um, which was about the experience of 
of, of people of color in the United States and their attempts to um, at create equality um, and all the different times they have attempted to do it. And my, my colleague, Joy Gorman, just made an update of it called Hallowed Ground with some brilliant filmmakers and is about to make a new docu-series called Eyes on the Prize, which is a look almost 50 years later at where the movement has come. Um, and that to me is a way where entertainment is reflecting the social values or the social mores of right now just by documenting them. Um, the, the, the thing that, uh, that I will say is that entertainment doesn't have to reflect those, but it can. And if it can, and you want it to, then you should try. And the amount that you'll that you are able to try is what the audience will receive. I took a class in college about the history and the rhetoric and the and the historiology of memory and how things stick with us as an audience because i've been very interested in the audience as much as i'm interested in making entertainment and and the point of being able to express yourself on the themes that you're asking me about are uh is an opportunity for you to connect with an audience who wants to receive those themes but it doesn't mean that every bit every person in the world has to receive every theme but hopefully within the within the context of all the entertainment we're making, we all receive what we want to receive from it, either entertainment or sheer joy or theme or social impact or emotional impact or deep drama or reflection or memory. And that's the that's the context that goes into every show I ever make. Yeah. And providing experiences you, you would not otherwise have had. And let's say with an example, if you watched an Winter on Fire, you know, a, a documentary about Ukrainian battle for freedom. I work in film and every time a foreign crew comes in, they say, we've watched this and we have, we have so much respect. And, you know, they always talk about goosebumps and we always, I always bring them to the Square of Independence and how much just one show, which is hour and a half, has entirely changed their perception and knowledge about our country, which might be out of, of, of their daily context. How much of um, an impact can that have potentially otherwise in terms of globalization? And um, how do you attract viewers and make them want deliberately to watch that content, which might be completely out of their everyday life? I think because of that, because I think people are are, are genuinely interested, um, and I think if we give the audience the the incredible benefit of the doubt that they're interested in learning um, more than they knew that day, um, then a documentary like that will will change people's lives. I mean, my life has been changed from when I was a little kid. I grew up in New York City, and there were movies playing all the time from all over the world. So I didn't even know that there wasn't a whole big world out there. I always assumed there was, and I wanted to see every part of it. And I have been so gratified and so thankful to you all um, for helping uh, me be part of your community um, and be able to, to interact and engage. Um, I think it's extraordinary that the documentary has been seen and has influence on people. Um, my philosophy around entertainment is that um, it, it, it takes a very psychological or sociological or even anthropological perspective on entertainment, which is we are a whole set of experiences and entertainment has an ability to connect with with any or all of them at any point in our lives. So if 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 the story is very specific to a time and place um, like the documentary and a struggle for 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 freedom and a struggle for um, for for rights, um, everyone who struggled for rights will connect to it at, at at some point because they will understand the struggle. Um, if it's an opportunity to amplify and show how people are living in in their lives, in fiction or non, it's extraordinary because we're all living our lives. You know. So what I love about what we do, what I love about um, the opportunity that gets created and the opportunity that's created by the fact that, that, that someone's made something that, that tr is transported outside of, of one's own country and shown to other people, it means there's an opportunity for us to connect with each other and have common ground and common tongue and storytelling. Okay. And uh, drawing on that, anthropologically speaking, people are people and they're going to have the same challenges and, uh, you know, and dreams and, and um, feelings. Uh, 
how do you think, how do you reach that generalness, but at the same time provide a powerful story? And you, how do you find that story still when everything seems to be already told? I don't, that's the thing that's really I, I know that's the hardest question. I know every, I know that's always been, it's always been a wonderful um, mantra that every story has ever been told, but, but that's why I think every story can be told again. Um, one of the things that I'm obsessed with in filmmaking um, is the, is the empirical difference between objectivity and subjectivity. Um, and narrative filmmaking has the opportunity to retell a story subjectively. I worked on a show at HBO um, called Our Boys, and the idea of the show was to examine um, two families, one who has committed an act of atrocity and the other who's had it happen to them in a world of conflict. And what we did is instead of showing an empirical uh, 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 objective um, whole camera view, we told each character's story so that you could understand that there is truth and there is emotion and there is subjectivity in everyone's story. And then there is the truth of what happened. I think most of the storytelling that I've worked on examines that, which is there is an essential truth. Can the audience have the freedom and the, and the power to put together the truth when a bunch of people are telling their own version of a story? And that's always been one of my favorite things. My other favorite thing has been to take an, an idea or an ideology like like what happened in Westworld, where, where, where Jonah and Lisa and J.J. Abrams said, we want to examine what would happen in the future if robots gain consciousness. Would they become more human or less? I would take that storytelling on any day because the, the challenge of that, the emotion of that, we all wonder you know, that those deep questions. If, if you if you look at your entertainment and you look at it not as a statement, which is interesting because it makes a statement, but you look at it as a set of questions, you make the audience just as active in the experience as you are as the filmmaker. And I think that's what I do for a living in television. Every episode has a question at the very end to lead you to the next episode. Every show has a question about life to lead you to the next show. Um, I think it's that's the power of our our medium to be able to do so much more than it, that, than people imagine it does. I, 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 I feel very privileged, though, that I work with storytellers who have a lot of questions about life. True Detective, to me, was very much about morality. Uh, it was very much not about whether or not um, you catch somebody as a police officer, but do you have the capacity to do right or wrong, which is a very moral, it's a very religious, it's a very primal idea. Um, Sharp Objects uh, was about, uh, can you ever get catharsis uh, for trauma? Um, can you ever release trauma? And the answer is, uh, at the very end, as we know, uh, don't tell mama. So that was our answer, which is maybe maybe you relive trauma every single time the trauma visits you. Um, I, I, I find that there are themes in every every uh, show that I've ever worked on. I think I came from a place where themes were distinguished distinguishable in the material. Um, it was part of the, the way we make, make material at HBO, but I'm seeing it all over the world. Everyone's making extraordinary, extraordinary television and movies. Um, it's, it's a wonderful time. Um, and, and hopefully our company will continue to make things that we can discuss in the future uh, that, that debate and examine and look at, at, at the nature of who we are as people and the world we live in. Um, there's a couple of things I'm thinking of that I can't say yet, but I'm, I'm excited about um, that we'll really examine. There's, there's one program we're working on, which is a, a, a way of looking at filmmaking and filmmaking experience in multiple countries uh, uh, to express how similar we are as filmmakers and then how different we are in our specific experiences, but how similar we are in the emotions of those questions that we ask ourselves. And, and, and that hopefully will be to your question, uh, a, a, a great confluence of all the science that we put and themes and ideas and social movements, um, also with the power of filmmaking, but hopefully it will be the most inclusive and broad-based volume of filmmaking in one place uh, that, that I've ever worked on. Okay. Thank you very much, David. Mm -hmm.
Looking forward to seeing more content from anonymous content. Um, thank you for having me. And thank you, everyone there. I'm sorry I'm not there, but wishing everyone the best. Thank you so very much. Take care. Thank you, David. I remind you that this panel discussion, this interview, was conducted in the context of TCA, Transformation Communications Activity, USAID. And now we are going to stop for a moment. And I'm sorry. Нагадаю, що нас дивляться більше тисяч людей зараз. На сьогодні наша офіційна програма першого дня завершена. І зустрінемося з вами завтра о 10-й ранку. Дякую, що були з нами.